write 120 as a product of its prime factors. So when we're doing the prime factorization, we need to remember what our prime numbers are. Let's write them down the side here. So prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided by one and themselves. They need two factors. So two is a prime number, three is a prime number, five is a prime number, seven, 11, 13, and so on. They're only in their own times table and the one times table. One is not a prime number because it can only be divided by one and one is itself. It only has one factor, not the two factors that we need for a prime number. So let's write 120 as a product of its prime factors. We're going to take 120 and split it up to be two numbers that multiply together to give 120. Now, it doesn't matter what two you pick. You could pick 12 times 10. You could pick 60 times 2. You'll still get the same answer at the bottom. So let's do 12 and 10. Neither of those are prime, so we carry on with both. 12 is 6 times 2, and 2 is a prime number, so we're going to circle that. You could have done 3 times 4, it wouldn't make a difference. 6 is then 2 times 3, and they're both prime numbers, so we circle them. Going back up to the 10, 10 is 2 times 5, and they're both prime, so we circle them. That's one mark so far. Our final answer needs to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. If you were then asked to give that answer in index form, you would need to write that as 2 cubed times 3 times 5. In this case, we weren't. So either of those answers would be absolutely fine for both marks. Either that one or that one are both okay for, for the second mark. Okay, write 80 as the product of its prime factors. So 80 at the top. This time I'm going to go 40 times 2. Why not? Circle the 2 because it's prime. 40 is 10 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2 and 10 is 5 times 2. So that's one mark and then for our second mark we need to write it out 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 which is 2 to the power of 4 times 5. If we were asked to write it in index form we'd need to give it like that but in this case either of those answers are absolutely fine. Okay question number three write 200 as the product of its prime factors. So again we're going to start with 200 at the top. I'm going to go 100 times 2 2 is prime, so we circle it. 100 is 10 times 10, which is 2 times 5 and 2 times 5. So the answer to that one is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. We tend to go in ascending order, so the smallest numbers first and then the bigger numbers. just means that everyone writes it the same way around and our answer is a little bit nicer to look at. So 2 cubed, because there's three 2s there timesing together, times 5 squared. Question number four, write 150 as the product of its prime factors. This time I'm going to go 15 times 10. And 15 is 3 times 5. Circle them both because they're both prime. And 10 is 2 times 5. Circle them both because they're both prime. And that is 2 times 3 times 5 times 5, which is 2 times 3 times 5 squared. Great, two marks there. Okay, question number five. Write 100 as the product of its prime factors. I'm going to go 50 times 2, just to mix it up. 2 is prime, so we'll circle it. 50 is 25 times 2, and 25 is 5 times 5. So we know that 100 is 2 times 2 times 5 times 5, and you may also write that as 2 squared times 5 squared. For part B, it says find the highest common factor of 100 and 140. Now, to use a prime factorization to do this, we also need to do the prime factorization of 140. So let's just do that here. 2 times 70. 70 is 35 times 2. And 35 is 5 times 7. They're all primes, so circle them. So we've got 2 times 2 times 5 times 7. I'm then going to do a Venn diagram. So a circle for 100 and a circle for 140, and let's just label that on the outside. And then we're going to put in the middle something that they've got in common. So looking at this for 100, 100 equals that, and looking at this for 140, what have they got in common? So they've both got a 2, so we'll put that in the middle. They've both got another 2, so we can put that in the middle. And they both have a 5, so we can put that in the middle as well. Anything that they don't have in common that's left over can then go on the outside. So with the 100, I'm left with a 5, and that needs to go on the outside here. And with the 140, I'm left with a 7, so that goes on the outside here. The highest common factor is found by multiplying everything in the middle together. So 2 times 2 is 4, times that by 5, and that is 20. So the highest common factor of both numbers is 20. That is the biggest factor of both of the numbers that they have in common. 
So five is a common factor, but it's not the highest one. 20 is the highest common factor of both numbers. Now we are asked to find the lowest common multiple. Now all the hard work here has been done for us. So we've already got the lowest common multiple in this answer somewhere. We just need to know how to do it. So looking at the Venn diagram now, I need to take that 20 that was in the middle and multiply it by any numbers that are left on the outside. So times five and times seven. Any numbers that were left out here that we didn't use, we're just gonna multiply by those. So take your highest common factor and just multiply it by any numbers that are left. 20 times five is 100 and 100 times seven is 700. So that would be my lowest common multiple. Okay, in question number six, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So 84 is seven times 12. Seven's a prime number, so we'll circle it. And 12 is three times four. Three is prime and four is two times two. So we've got 84 as two times two times three times seven. And then for 84 and 210, we need to do the prime factorization of 210. I'm gonna do 21 times 10. 10 is two times five, and 21 is three times seven. So 210 is two times three times five times seven. Let's now do our Venn diagram, just the same as we did on the previous question. I'm gonna put 210 on this side, and I'm gonna put 84 on this side. What can we put in the middle? Well, they've both got a two, so let's put that in the middle. Um, they've both got a three, so let's put that in the middle and they've both got a seven. So let's put that in the middle. Now 210, we're left with a five, so that needs to go out here, and 84, we're left with a two, so that needs to go out here. Your highest common factor is all the numbers in the middle multiplied together. So two times three times seven is 42. So that's the highest common factor of 84 and 210, the biggest number that fits into both. I now need to do the lowest common multiple. So we need to find that lowest common multiple. We're going to take the highest common factor, 42, the numbers in the middle multiplied together, and times it by any numbers left on the outside. So we're going to times by 2, and we're going to times by 5, because they're left on the outside of the Venn diagram. Now the easiest thing to do here would be to say, well, 2 times 5 is 10. And then we can just do 42 times by 10, which is 420. And that would be the first number in both their times tables, the lowest common multiple.